What's going on everybody fishing the odds here? Today just got off the river and we got a bunch of fresh coho eggs. Um, a lot of you have been asking how I cure my eggs so I'm just going to go over that real quick for you guys. As you can see already butterflied open a couple skeins and then got some more in the bag so it's a total of three hens here and uh, I'm just going to show you what I use and how I do it so stay tuned. Alright guys, so here we got our coho eggs, for you guys that don't know, and I know a lot of you guys know. First of all, bleed your fish really well before you guys do this, um, so you don't get a lot of blood in your skeins. But, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to take my uh, scissors here and go right at the center of this, as you guys can see, and you're just going to butterfly it, okay? What that's going to do is it's going to start to open the eggs. See how they're opening like that? So what that's going to do is it's going to allow all that cure to get inside of all the individual eggs instead of having to work its way down through all these little crevices because you didn't butterfly them, right? So I butterfly my skeins just like this. Go all the way down. I lay them on a napkin. Typically I do it to all of them and I just lay them all out and I'll, I'll do all the main cures one way and then I'll add different things to make them fish better in certain rivers if that makes any sense. Certain rivers like some garlics will do better. Certain rivers some herring oil will do better. Um, so I kind of just I kind of just base it like that. So. Not all my eggs are going to be the same. I like to have, when I'm on the river, I like to have three different cures. Um, never go out there with just one because just one might not be the trick, right? So I'm just butterflying up my eggs right here. And I know, like a lot of you guys, you got your own ways and everything, and there's a bunch of ways to cure eggs, guys. There is a bunch. You can even use, like, like honest, honestly, you want like a sweet cure, you could use like jello packs. <laughs> We're not doing nothing like that, but And also you could you if you like the way a natural egg smells, um like say you just you just caught a fish on that river and you want a natural egg, use the same egg from the fish that you caught on that river. And just use the regular cure. Just plain cure. Alright, so I got the Potskis go for the krill here. Okay? I got this. And I have the borax from Pro Cure, right? So, you could just borax cure your eggs. I mean, you don't really need the Potski. I mix the two. It's just what I do and it works. You guys have seen that, so I'm going to go over that for you real quick. So what I have here, guys... I have my cure as you can see. I'm just going to sprinkle it over all my eggs. Okay? Lightly sprinkle over all my eggs. You'll have it accidentally more in some spots. That's alright. This is just what I do. Okay, as you guys can see, I have all of the cure sprinkled over. So I'm going to take my borax. Okay, I'm pretty heavy on borax. I'm, I'm generous. I put a lot of borax on these. So it helps preserve this egg. And depending on what you're using your eggs for, guys, if you're going to use them for steelhead, I'd recommend drying them. If you're going to use them for Chinook, I would recommend letting them milk inside of the bag for two days. That's what I do. I literally let my eggs milk inside of a bag for two days. I'll show you that in a minute. And I'll show you how they come out. They're good for Chinook, good milky eggs, good for coho. And then for steelhead, you want a more pungy egg, you want like a, you know, a, a harder rubbery like egg. Um, so, you definitely want to let those air dry. 
But basically today we're just going over how to cure these eggs. How I do it. What works for me. And then you guys can pick the scents that you want to go over with your eggs. So boom, I know it looks crazy. It's absolutely mad right now, look at that. Absolutely mad. But I'll show you the finished product, it looks great. So one of the things I like to sprinkle over my eggs, guys, is Monster Bite. A little bit goes a long way. I don't run a whole bunch of Monster Bite, but I will coat it. Now, again, I don't want Monster Bite on all my eggs, so don't add it to all your eggs. Just add it to the ones you feel like you need Monster Bite on. <laughs> the sky's kind of the limit with eggs. You won't know they work until you start catching fish on them, so... Do do whatever you got to do to get your eggs the way you like them. But this is where I start, okay? Now from here, I'm going to put them in a gallon bag, and then I'll show you the rest. All right, guys. So I'm going to put two skeins in each bag. Oh, woman's going to be mad. I better clean the kitchen. <laughs> She's not home right now. I'm taking advantage of this. Okay, so here I have two skeins in one bag. I decided I'm going to put the rest of the skeins in this bag. So I got four skeins in here. And that's because I'm going to be using those for steelhead. I'm going to air dry those ones for 24 ish hours so probably 24 hours air dried and then uh, these other eggs I'm still going to use for coho and chinook so I'm going to let them sit inside of the bag for 48 hours I literally put them room temperature I'll literally set them on top of my fridge on a paper plate for two days and they just milk in the bag now when they're milking in the bag just let them milk don't drain out the liquid let the eggs soak it back up. In time, they'll just soak it back up. And uh, and you're going to have a really milky egg. Super red, super milky egg. Um, so I'm going to go over a couple little things that you guys can add into your eggs after the initial cure. Um, like, I, like I just showed you guys, you can add um, Monster Bite. Monster Bite's been very effective for me this year. And also... Um, one of the other things I'm going to show you guys you can use... Uh, is minced garlic. <laughs> if you want a garlicky egg, this adds chunk, it adds texture, as well as a natural garlic scent that doesn't come in like a Procure bottle or something like that. So I'm gonna take my eggs here. These are the ones I'm gonna use for Chinook and Coho. And uh, basically, You're gonna just do a couple spoons of this. <laughs> it's quite a bit of garlic there. Look at that. Maybe two spoons. There you go. Look at all the garlic in this. <laughs> a lot of texture. I'm just going to let that garlic stay in the bag, soak up all those scents, just get really garlicky, okay? And then, and then, another thing you can do is add some Procure anise and krill. So, I'm going to, I like anise and krill. So, I'm going to add anise and krill. And this is the oil. So, I just, I'm, I put a kind of a lot in there, okay? And I just let it soak it all up. Okay? So this is basically going to here, just like this, for two days. And then after two days, it's going to come out really red, really juicy, ready for Chinook. These other eggs, don't have time to show you the process or anything, but these other eggs, in two days, will be pretty dry, ready for steelhead, right? But then I'm going to freeze them. Here we go. At this point, this literally is just going to go on top of my fridge. Huh. 
So here guys is a good example of what your eggs are going to look like your Chinook eggs after you cure them for 24 to 48 hours. Nice and juicy, nice and red, ready to fish. I will catch fish on these. <laughs> so that's that that's what that's gonna look like. Got a bunch of eggs. Got even more after today. And man, they look red. So guys, get the base cured down the way that you want it. Get the eggs milking the way that you want them. And after that curing process, then start playing with scents and find out what you're getting bit on and what you're not. Like I said, if you only got two skeins, cut them in half. You know, put half of that skein one flavor, half of that skein another flavor, and half of that skein another flavor. There's many different oils, you know, anise, krill, crawfish, herring, the list goes on. There's many different things that you guys can do to put in your eggs. Try different ones. Whichever one's working, make more of that kind, and you guys get the gist. So hopefully this video helped out some of you that uh, have been asking me to do an egg video. But that's how I cure my eggs. Um, it's pretty simple. I don't use a lot of the Posca cure, but I use plenty of borax. And uh, and yeah, my eggs come out good. I'm pretty happy with how uh, I've been fishing my eggs this year. So hopefully this, this helps some of you guys. P.S. Comment below what you think. Or comment below some egg cures that you guys have. Egg cures that work for you. I'm curious to see, and I'm sure there's people in the comment section that can learn from you guys. Um, it's all about helping people, so hit that subscribe button. Till next time, guys. Tight lines. Got a lot of raft videos coming up. Ooh, I seen that. Oh, right there. There we go. See on? Yeah. I'm trying to rig here, dude. <laughs> Let's hope that's a nice one. Let's hope that's a nice one, huh? Yeah. Hope it ain't the same fish. <laughs> <laughs> Wouldn't that be something? Yeah. He's hungry. Down here, huh? That's a heavier fish. I'm gonna keep all those logs, huh? Yeah. I was rigging and he hooks up. This is awesome. He's staying down, dude. Yeah, it's Chinook again. Problem is, guys, this river's low. So. There's some coho in here, but there's way more Chinook. So these, some of these coho will be sitting where these Chinook are. Oh my God. That was a good takedown, huh? Oh, dude, I was watching that. Bloop, bloop. It's a heavy fish. Might run out of memory card on this one. This is our third. Uh -huh. Trying to get into that tree. Yep. I don't want him in here. Hey now. Big fish. Strong, strong fish. Oh, head shakes. Oh yeah. <laughs> No. You got him dead to rights. Huh? You got him dead to rights. Are you using those four out hooks again? Those bigger ones? I think I got three in this one. Right. Mine came off probably because when you pinch those stupid barbs, you never know when you're going to lose that fish. Right.
I'm gonna keep it tight. Doubles on. Oh, they got a fish over there too. Holy crap, it's a good hole. Dude, it's gonna be a while. Looks like a big old pull up or a big old chum, huh? Oh, you probably got. His might be a coho. This might be a record coho. That's pretty cool. Doubles right there. How's it feel, Ed? Good. It's been a good day, huh? Yeah. So Coming out here, low clear conditions. We were thinking it was going to be a bust. Yeah. I'm trying to get him to come up. So I can see it. Oh, you can see. Oh, the there he is. Oh, it's a fighter. That's a big fish. He's just staying in that current. I got some pressure on this fish too. I know you do. Damn. <clears throat> Come on. Got those barbless hooks, man. You gotta keep pressure on that bad boy. Is that your cousin's rod? Yeah. Unbelievable, huh? Mm hmm. He gets over here in that shallow water. And he wants to head back up here. Our eggs are working, huh? Oh, yeah. Real nice. Here he goes again. See, I told you. Every time. Damn, this is a big fish, dude. This is a big fish. Oh, yeah. You see how he's got his up to the boat? Yep. I can't even hardly get in on this fish. He gets over here. And, uh... You, you got a big one. I'd like to see that fish. Yeah, get him out of that current. You sure he drags plenty? You got plenty? You got thirty. You have twenty-five pounds on there. Peter. Yeah. Yeah. Oh yeah. I want to see it, don't you? Oh yeah. It'd be cool as one of those thirty-pound fish or something. Could be. He's big. He's heavy. Oh boy. I didn't get my hand on, on the chair. <laughs> I know, I've seen that. This is a lot of fun, guys. This is a big fish. The one I lost was probably somewhere similar to this. It's a big fish. Dang. Ooh. 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 Well, I don't like those head shakes. Like that. That's when they pop off. You know what I mean? Yeah. Look at that rod. Oh. Yeah, this is a. Hey. This is a 10 to 20. Dude. Yeah. Getting some killer shots. Are you? Mm hmm. Man. Like this is a big fish, dude. You want to fight him? No, no. No. No, no. You're welcome. No, I don't care. No, I'm not gonna. That's your fish, Ed. I gotta fight a nice one this morning. You know? Might end up being 12 pounds. No. <laughs> no, not this fish. 13, maybe? No, just kidding. Probably what, 25? Oh, every bit of that. Think so? I think so. Look, I'll tell you, I got some pressure on this fish. Could be a chum. Could be, but it could be a big. It, it's a big one. Giant hatchery coho. <laughs> Man, I'm actually getting kind of tired. <laughs> <laughs> Get him out of that current. I'm trying. I did. I tried. Look. Yeah, no, I see your hand on the drag. When he takes off that way, he's been on that long, he's got some power. You know what? Yeah. Damn. Maybe you got a surgeon. No. No. <laughs> no. He's going back out there. Oh, yeah. He's right by your bobber over there. Thanks. Big fish. Looks like he's under your boat almost. Dang. Oh. See that bobber? Oh, I see it. 
He's got to get tired pretty soon, right? Keep that tight. Now he's, I think he might be giving up some. He's right out there, isn't he? I see. He sees the shallow, clear water, and he takes back off over there. Can you see him yet? No, I can't. Oh. I can't see him. Damn. You gotta let him run. You don't want to break. Oh man, not after this, huh? <laughs> this is like the one I had on that one day, remember? Yeah. Good lord. There he is. Let's see if we can't see him in a minute. I'm backing up, but he goes that way. <laughs> <laughs> That's the closest I've seen that bobber. Yeah. Oh, he's coming. Reel down. That's a big fish. Where is he? I still don't see him. Still don't see him. Man, where's these coho at? Jeez, how big is this fish? He's got to be right there. Oh, come on. Dude, I'm, I'm, I'm trying. That's fun fighting fish, huh? My arm, I, mean, I am getting tired. Oh, oh Lord. let him take off. Let him take off. I know. You want to at least see it, don't you? Mm-hmm. Good video. Oh, yeah. I'm right on that bobber. Very strong fish. That's awesome, Ed. <laughs> That's so awesome. I hope it's huge. Like 30 pound. If I told you 25 or 30, we might be uh we might be in for a surprise, buddy. I hope you're right. <laughs> Does that make you nervous? <laughs> I hope it's big. Not your 30, dude. Maybe your drag's loose. <laughs> Uh-uh. My arms are actually getting tired. That's good. There's my bobber stop, so we still got ways to go. Dude, it's 11 minutes. Where is Dude, this fish? fish? He's big. Oh, oh, I might have seen it for a sec. Oh. Oh. Oh, I kind of... Oh! Oh! I'm going to try to keep him this way, huh? I want to keep him going over there. You can tell that's a big fish. Oh man. Dude, that's that's a pig. Whatever it is. It looks dark. Oh, look at the size. Dude, that is a big fish. Dude, that's a real big fish. It's dark though. Yeah, I told you it's all big. Oh. Dude. That's a big one. Stay on there, buddy. He just don't want to give up, does he? <laughs> no. <laughs> oh, man. Oh. <laughs> That's a tank. Dude. He's right in the beak, too. Oh, get the net, dude. 
Well, no, the net's too small. Yeah, that is too small. Dude, that's, that's a... That's a 30 pounder. That's a 30 pounder, dude. Oh. He's getting tired. Two. Dude, beautiful fish. Oh, okay. I'll take a break after this. Oh my gosh. The size of that. Our net's like this big. See, wow. These little bait casters, when you get something like this, it's a hell of a fight. I can't net that. There's no way. No, no you won't go in the net. It's too big. I'm just worried about that tree. Look at, look at the size of that. Oh, his mouth is open. Watch the tree! Just get him up here. Oh, he's I tired. He's pretty tired. The tree. Dude, that's a big. Trying to get him over here. Oh, watch out for that pontoon. Get him back up. Trying to get him in this gravel, huh? Dude, I'd like to get a measurement on that fish. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Oh, yeah. Oh, you're in the Oh my god! God! Bring it! Oh. Dude! What? What? Holy shit! What, 40? Oh my gosh, Ed. Yeah, I haven't seen it, but it looks like a seal. You got that going? Yeah. Oh my no god! No way! Oh, yeah. I guarantee, oh, dude. Wow, look at the fin! Look at the fin on that! Look at the fin! Yeah. Look at my thumb. Look. Awesome, oh man. man. Dude, get some go. Oh. Oh. Dude. Oh. Oh, yeah. <laughs> At 40 pounds. Easy. Oh. Good lord. Oh, my God. oh, Alec, I'm shaking, man. I know. Okay, I'm trying not to shake. Hold that on. That's one of the most biggest Chinook I've ever seen. Dude, that is awesome. Look at that Chinook, guys. Oh. Wow. I'm trying to catch my breath. I know. What a fight. All right. Oh, dude. Oh. Yeah. Hey. Dude. No blood. He's hooked right on your beak. Oh, He'll man. He'll survive. What a fish, huh? Oh, man. I'm shaking, dude. You don't see that every day. Yeah, you don't. That's dude. Awesome. Dude. Holy. Oh, man, I'm wore out. That's a big fish, dude. Bring that over. Okay. Oh, my gosh. Wow. Dude. I'd like to get a measurement, but we don't have anything. We don't. I, I guarantee that fish over 40 pounds, dude. He's almost I haven't ready. caught one that big in, in the rivers in a long time. He's almost ready. All right. I've never seen. Oh. Look at the size of that. Dude, hey. Is that female or male? Big, big buck. Big buck. I had him right on the beak. As soon as I brought him in, the hook came out. You don't see it. All right, guys. All right, guys. We're gonna get this fish back in the water. Oh man, he's. I can't believe the size of that. There he goes. Ready? There we go. Ready? Oh my god, Ed. Good job, man. Oh man, I'm wore out, dude. I... Oh, now you know why I was pulling so damn hard. Oh man. <sighs>